All right, hello everybody and welcome back to Rogue Leader Gaming and welcome back to Derail Valley and we are doing another tutorial. Last week, uh, I said that I wasn't sure when they were going to release the DE6 slug and turns out they released it about the same day that the video came out. So um, we have got the release of the DE6 slug. So we're going to be taking a look at the DE6 and the DE6 slug today. Um, but before we get started, I want to remind everybody watching on YouTube to be sure to like, subscribe. We do some fun series. We do plenty of DRL Valley on this on this channel. So be sure to come check it out. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get on into this. So the DE6 uh, was added to the game, I believe, in DRL Valley Overhauled in that big update. And so it's been in the game for a little while. Um, I wanted before I made a tutorial with this thing, I wanted to have something extra to talk about because it has been in the game for a while and though some stuff has changed it hasn't changed a lot and so i wanted to make sure that we had a like a bigger thing as well with this and so like i said we're going to be taking a look at both this and the slug which we'll talk about shortly but first a little bit of uh, a look at this thing so the big orange boy here uh is the de6 it is based on an emd G16, which was used by a bunch of different railways, but um, the specific inspiration was uh, largely based off of a Yugoslavian variation of this. Um, and one of them specifically had a chop nose design like this. So a lot of them had um, this nose here was as tall as this back part, the hoods, but the um, short hood on some of them were chopped down like this into this nose. And that is what this one is based off of. Uh, it would be cool if they ever add another diesel electric. It would kind of be cool, if I'm being honest, to have a high nose of some kind. Maybe though, maybe something more like a GP9. The license for this locomotive costs $200,000. 200 thousand dollars which is a lot it's uh it's definitely a late game locomotive uh it has a mass of 120 tons uh it has a load rating of 1340 tons but they can be mu'd together which uh makes for really really easy usage to add multiple of these and they have a length of 18.78 meters all good things to keep in mind when looking at this but uh, I really like the way this thing has been designed. You know, it's got um, two separate fuel tanks here, which is a little strange to me, but OK. Um, you know, it's got it's got. So going along with the concept that we have talked about before in the naming scheme of the diesels, it's got um, this is a DE6, which means it's a diesel electric with six axles so as we can see we've got three axles per truck there's two trucks so six axles and uh, i really like the way this thing looks it looks um it looks really cool it's got a it's got a vibe it's got a vibe so we haven't actually talked about diesel electrics in our tutorial series quite yet because i haven't reviewed the de2 which uh i'll be honest there's already a tutorial about the de2 in literally the first the first 10 minutes of the game so if y'all really want to see that, let me know, but eh. So the D diesel electric locomotives work based on the, in the big bit here, in the big hood, you have a big diesel engine. And actually, uh, in this particular locomotive, okay, let's not fall off. Yeah, in this particular locomotive, uh, where's my, so you got a flashlight, but we have here, uh, oh, it goes really low poly whenever you're not standing on it. It's interesting. I didn't know that. But we have here a big diesel engine, as you can see. Um, which we will get to this compartment later. But, um, you have a diesel engine, and this is, it's actually a generator. And it is generating electricity... It doesn't actually drive the wheels, right? It is generating electricity, and that electricity is used to power an electric motor that is attached to each and every axle on the locomotive. 
Uh, so each axle is powered and each axle has its own electric motor. They're all wired uh, together uh, and together they all um, move the wheels using the electric power generated by the generated by the prime mover uh, generator. So that is basically how a diesel electric works. Unlike the diesel hydraulic, which uses hydraulic fluid, and unlike the diesel mechanical, which uses straight shaft driven, um, because it doesn't make sense with something this big, it doesn't make sense to have it driven by a shaft, you know, because you got to have these, these trucks need to pivot, right? These need to pivot, uh, so that it can actually go around curves, right? And so it doesn't make sense to have it mechanically driven. That's a lot of moving parts. There are joints, mechanical joints that would allow such pivoting, but they would wear and tear really really easily and so you don't want that so instead you have tra uh, traction motors so now that we know how a diesel electric locomotive works i want to build on that a little bit so let's talk about the de6 slug the de6 slug can be found if i go ahead and orient myself to the sun so you guys can see it the de6 slug can be found you buy the um license we're here in the harbor right now because you buy the license for the de6 slug uh, or not the license, the, um, it is actually a work train piece. And so around the map are a couple of garages. You will, there's a caboose in one of them. There's a hand car in another one. And now they've just added in this latest patch update, they have added the D6 slug. Uh, and it is located, uh, down here in the Harbor. Uh, you can buy at the shop here in the Harbor. You can buy the key, and it is located up that little weird spur that goes to nothing. Uh, that's where the garage is located, so let's go check that out really quick. So like I said, here in the harbor is the shop. Now obviously I am in a sandbox mode, so the key is not really available. Um, but if we come here and take a look, you can see Steve's garage key is the one that you're looking for, and it unlocks a work train. Uh, and that is the DE6 slug. All right, and then if we come to, we are now at the east end of the harbor. And we can see this weird track going off in the distance right here that goes to nothing. Huh? Uh... It's over there, look. Yes. Uh, That's what I meant. Yes. So over here... <laughs> The east end of the harbor, there's this track here, uh, which as you can see, seemingly goes to nothing, but let's go run up this track and I will show you Steve's garage. So at the end of this track here, as you can see, we are down here uh, on this little weird track. You can see here we have Steve's garage and in it is the DE6 slug. So there's two ways of getting this thing. Like I said, this is the only place where it spawns naturally, is in the garage. Uh, but we are going to go back to the harbor in town. We can actually spawn it in um, momentarily. But as you can see, there's a first look at it. Uh, and it does spawn here. And you can just bring a diesel electric up here. Or actually, technically, you could bring anything and just not actually use the thing to get it back down. Just drag it. But... Um, uh, you can bring something up here. Be aware that there's like a 10 mile an hour speed limit down this absolutely gnarly track. Um, very sharp curve, so be aware of that. But um, you can come up, up and actually grab it, or you can just spawn it in. Let's go back to the harbor, back to our DE6, and I will show you how to spawn it in. All right, we're back at the harbor, here with our DE6 friend. And uh, what we're going to go ahead and do... So we take our swizzle stick here. Obviously, I am in sandbox mode, and so I have access to the spawner. I can spawn anything in, but we're not going to use that. We're going to come here. So uh, it appears in sandbox mode, you can just spawn it in with the spawner. Um, but in career mode, um, you will have on your swizzle stick here, on your remote, you will have a button that says... I believe it says work train, and it spawns the caboose, the 
hand car, and now the DE6 slug. Um, but obviously we are in a sandbox mode, and so we're just going to use the spawner. We're going to go ahead and spawn this thing in. And so as you can see, I think... So this is actually a little shorter uh, in length than the DE6. It is, uh, as we can see here, it is 125 tons, uh, which is more than the 120 for the DE6, and it is 16.7 meters. And what this does, building on what we just learned about how a diesel electric works, is this does not have a diesel engine. You'll notice this is a little shorter as well. This, this hood is higher over here than it is on this one. This one is short. Uh, all the way along because it has no diesel generator inside it has no diesel engine it is filled with concrete actually the way slugs usually work in the real world is they're usually built out of spare parts uh, and kind of damaged locomotives a lot of the time and they don't need a diesel engine they don't need fuel they just need uh, the traction motors and weight, enough weight to weigh down those traction motors so you get good traction, right? You gotta have weight. Uh, and so it is literally the shell, pretty much, of a diesel locomotive, uh, diesel electric locomotive, filled with concrete, literal concrete, with the traction motor still on, and it uses our little blue cable here, the MU cable, connected up to a regular locomotive with a diesel generator, uh, to power those traction motors. Like I said, the diesel generator powers the traction motors on this locomotive. It will also power the traction motors on the slug. Because they just require power, and so the, it is set up in such a way that it will draw power from the diesel generator. Uh, there is no way to move this thing on its own. Uh, it must be connected to a locomotive, and it will actually work it will only work with the DE locomotive, so the DE6 and the DE2. So it will not work with the diesel hydraulic and nothing else has an MUK cable anyway. But it will only work with diesel electric locomotives. And, um, but it will work for the DE2. So if you happen to have a DE2 and you happen to be able to buy this key, which the key only costs, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this whenever we're looking at it in the shop, but the key only costs $20,000, which is like, a lot better than $200,000 that that thing costs. So you could actually get access to this slug reasonably early in the game and use it with the DE2, um, which actually is kind of a play. It's kind of an interesting play. But yeah, it works um, like that. So that's actually pretty cool because now you actually have access to some higher power with the DE2 um, reasonably early on and you don't have to necessarily get this but of course it looks a whole lot better when sat next to this than the tiny little DE2. This thing is really really good at adding traction if your DE6 can't pull a full load. Uh, you can add one of these. It'll, it'll help uh, distribute the load um, across multiple additional traction motors and it'll help power through it but um, in order to do that it is drawing more uh, amperage from the um, from the generator and so it means that it makes it a little bit easier to use more throttle you can you can put in higher throttle uh, without uh, overheating but you also, it's a little bit harder to get going fast. So what you're going to make up for in power, you're going to lose a little bit of, of ability to get up to speed. So keep that in mind. But it is, it is really, really good, especially like going uphill and everything. The other thing with this is, from, from the notes on this thing, uh, this thing can only be attached directly to the locomotive so you would not be able to have um like you would not be able to actually have two of these in a row next to each other you could however 
attach one of these on each side of a locomotive. So you could have like a slug and then the locomotive and then the slug. Um, but you can't have locomotive slug slug. So do keep that in mind uh, because um, they can only be attached directly to the locomotive itself. But uh, yeah, so with that, I think let's go ahead and let's take a look at the DE6 and its startup sequence and all that stuff. Um, and then we'll get to actually attaching this thing and, and, and using this thing and all that. So of course the DE6, one last thing, like I did say though, it can also be MU'd. You can MU multiple of these diesel locomotives together as well. Uh, if you want a bit more speed, uh, you can use multiple of these instead of using the slug with it. But... Uh, you can emu these to anything that's immuable, and it will help you control it. So, first of all, you have the handbrake on the side here. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, but you do have the handbrake. It's on the side of the walkway here, which honestly makes it a little bit hard to get to. Um, in all honesty, most locomotives in real life that I have seen have either got a handbrake like right here built into this nose bit uh, or like built like right behind this door into the thing sometimes uh, some stuff like that uh, whereas this one is literally just on the side here uh, I kind of would have liked to see this put in a different place this is a little bit like tedious to kind of reach down and grab and everything and uh, without stepping off of the locomotive, I don't know how you would, like, you'd have to kind of get really, like, crouched down in order to really use this in VR. So that's something I'm not sure how much, like, I, I'm not, I'm not super convinced with this placement. Um, there's better places to put this on, on diesel locomotives. Anyway, but let's go ahead. We need to get us started up here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to walk into the cab. And obviously we've got our door here, we've got our door there. This is not a door, but uh, but you can't teleport out of it. Um, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come to this back panel here, and we're gonna open this. Oh, we don't want that yet. So we're gonna go ahead and put our starter on. We're gonna put our electrics on. I'll hear this buzz buzzing noise come on. That buzzing noise means that the traction motors are offline, uh, and that is because we have to flick this big lever here, and that turns the traction motors on. And we'll go ahead and close that panel. And the next thing we need to do is actually turn the engine on. Now we've got the starter on and the electrics on, and we're good to go. We just need the engine to get turned on. Um, so what we're going to do for that, there's no starter button over here, as you can see, though there is uh, a fuel cutoff to get uh, to stop the locomotive and we'll go over the controls in a moment but what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out this door and on the side here is a pair of doors we're gonna open these up and we're gonna look in this engine which we were looking at earlier right uh, we were looking at this earlier but we're gonna open these up and we're going to this is where the starter is located is right here uh, so you also have this lever. So we're just going to hold that in position and start it up. We also have this lever here. Which is actually a, a like manual like throttle control or whatever to rev the engine up. I think the realistic process for starting is to kind of actually like hold this lever up and then start it so that it starts with a little bit more RPM, I believe. But um, I'll be honest, that's only really possible in VR. So all you really got to do is, is just swizzle the swizzle stick there. And then we're going to go ahead and close these. And we're going to go ahead and come into our cab. I'm going to close these doors. We're going to come into our cab. And we're going to start looking around at our cab stuff. So, like I said, on this back panel, you have this. We, of course, have these windows that can open. On both sides. 
Uh, and of course you've got your control panel. So the first thing's first, it's a little dark in here, let's get our lights on. So you first all have your dash light right up here, which turns on all the lights for your gauges, makes them easier to see. And then you have your cab light, which turns on the light for the cab, which makes it a lot easier to see in here. Ah! So, this locomotive, like the DE2, the DE2 has a fan in it. Uh, if you've watched some of my main series, you'll see me checking out the DE2. Um, and you'll see the fan, but this also has a fan. Fan doesn't do anything, it's just there for looks. But if you come down here underneath this panel here, you'll see the switch for the fan. And you can turn that on, and it spins. That's it, it's just aesthetic. It's just for, um... Immersion, which is really really cool. I love that they did this. They did not have to make this fan work But they did and it's really really cool that they did You also have your cab heater here, which the button to which doesn't actually do anything uh, Going over your lights lights. You of course have lights front and lights rear Turning this to the right turns the lights on Um uh, on forward mode, uh, and so the white lights are going to come on. Uh, turning it once turns them on to just running. They don't really emit any light, but they're just, they're visibly on. Turning it again turns on the low beams. And turning it one more time turns on the high beams. Turning it the other direction turns on the red light used uh, in if you want to be immersive and, and realism and everything you'll turn the red light on whenever it's at the back um, and it will emit more light and be brighter the more you turn this knob it's got two positions uh, for right now we're just going to leave it on running because it's daytime and then of course you have the same thing back here on the back, which we are going to turn the red light on. Uh, the next thing you've got here is your windshield wipers. So the first position turns them on a little bit, and there's a whole bunch of these. There, there's a, a set for this window, that window, that window. Uh, this window doesn't have any because it's a door, and then this window. And then this window doesn't have any because it's a door. Uh, then of course you've got a second setting where it's a bit faster. And a third setting, which is just full on. Just like on all the other locomotives, the usual three positions. Moving on to the gauges. You have, these are your brake pipes, so this is your main reservoir, and your brake pipe pressure, um, same principle as on all the other locomotives whenever you've got your brake pipe. Um, however much this handle is done up, that's your brakes right there, that's how much it gets applied. And of course, bring it back to release and it'll release. Uh, you have your tachometer, this is your engine RPM. You have your traction motor temperature. This is how hot the traction motors are getting. This thing, unlike the DE2, has no fan at all and is reliant on going fast enough to cool the motors. Uh, whereas this thing is in fact, you do have to worry about traction motor temp a little bit, but it has fans that go all the time, uh, unlike the DH4. The DH4, uh, whenever things get a little bit too hot, it has, um, it's for oil though. Uh, but the oil temperature, it has a fan that will come on so that it prevents overheating. Uh, but with this, the fan is always on, uh, so you really don't have to worry about it too much. But you do have to worry about it if it starts to get pretty high up. But that's part of what the DE6 slug is for, is to kind of relieve some of that load so that you're not overheating your traction motors. Um, because it'll spread out the load a bit better. And then of course you have your uh, ammeter, how many amps you're pulling across the board and all the stuff. You've got your speedometer up here. You've got your sand gauge, your fuel gauge, and your oil gauge there. Um, this is your sander, this button right here. Of course, you do have 
Uh, the fun stuff, such as you have a bell. Which you can hear there. Which sounds better than the bell in the DH4. Bell in the DH4 is weird. And of course, you have a horn. So that's what those sound like. Uh, next, let's go ahead and, like I said, I mentioned these brakes. This is our brake, uh, our train brake right here. However much you apply, however, however far you put the throttles, how much brake pressure is going to be applied. So if you want to dump a whole lot of pressure, you can just floor it all the way, and it'll dump all your pressure. Um, so it is a self-lapping brake. So anywhere that you put it, that's how much pressure you're going to be doing it, and you just hold it there, and it'll be fine. You, of course, have your independent brake as well. It works exactly the same as the independent brakes on all the other locomotives. Just, uh, this is just the brakes for the locomotive itself, though. So keep that in mind if you want to brake the whole train. Uh, it's recommended to use the train brake. You can do it with the independent brake, but the train brake is better. Um, you, of course, have the dynamic brake as well, which I will show you guys, um down the road, but it works basically the same as the dynamic brake in the DH4. Um, it is uh, very similar to an engine brake kind of a thing uh, where the traction motors are going to basically try to add resistance to the wheels um, or to the axles and, and whatever and try to slow them down. Uh, you of course have your throttle and your reverser. So with that, let's go ahead uh, oh, I didn't pick out a job, did I? I need to go pick out a job. First things first, though, let's go grab our um, DE6 slug really quick. So we need to back up a little bit for that. So we're going to throw, throw us in reverse. All of our brakes should be off. And let's go ahead and notch us back. All right. We're going to come grab this thing. And what we're going to do is we are going to hook it up as usual. I actually haven't used the MU cable on these tutorials. I've showed you that it exists, but I haven't actually used it. So we're going to hook it up as normal. And the other thing we're going to do is hook up this MU cable. And now that we've hooked up this MU cable, you'll notice something. First thing you're going to notice is the lights on here that we did turn on aren't on anymore. Why? Because now, it's reset my lights. So we turn our front lights to running. And just for the sake of it, we're going to turn the lights on the rear to bright. Now we're going to come here, and as you can see, the lights over here are on. So, um, the lighting, of course, on mu locomotives uh, is based on whatever the front locomotive is and whatever the back locomotive is. So if you put this... I've, so, in, as an example, I talked about earlier having a slug on each side of your locomotive that you're driving from. Uh, you would still be able to use headlights. They would just be the headlights from the lead slug. Uh, kind of like this in this scenario right here. I would have to actually drive that at night in order to see how well that would actually work. Uh, how good you'd be able to see. But, you know, you get the, you get the gist. But that is how the lights work. So, we're going to go ahead and throw this, throw our lights into reverse. And as you can see, oh, I did it for the wrong light. Why <laughs> oh, can't I, there we go. Uh, and so now you see we've turned it into reverse, uh, we've turned the light onto the red setting and there it is, the red light back there. So like I said, this is a slug. It has absolutely no engine but it does have traction motors. And so what we're gonna do is let's put us in uh, forward and I'm just gonna full send it. You left the brake on, you duds. 
Did you? No, it's off. Okay. So usually, when you crank this thing, from uh, standing still to just full bore, you'll see the ammeter comes up, but usually you'll see, you'll get some wheel spin, but you'll notice we have the slug, and so we're not actually getting wheel spin because it's able to distribute the load well enough that we don't get the wheel spin. And so now we are just able to jump up in speed as an example there. Go ahead and dump our pressure though. We need to go find a job as well. But uh, so that's a good example of how, like I said, it will help a lot if you're having issues with wheel slipping um, and that kind of stuff. Um, but that is, that is the, DE6 slug, and so it's going to provide some extra power. So, with that extra power, let's go see if we can find us a job. Alright, so we're backing up to go get a job. Uh, we're just going to go down to the steel mill. Uh, I don't think this job is going to be a really good test of both of these together. I think that the DE6 alone could do this. Um, but if we had two, like, really big jobs like this one, is it's a long haul too. Uh, and so... You've got to have train length, too. Uh, and so... But typically, I think a DE6 will usually be able to do a train length, too, alone a lot of the time. Depending on the cargo. Depending on the cargo. But, um... It should... I think, according to the load rating, it should definitely be able to handle this one on its own. But we're going to use the traction... Uh, the, the slug anyway. Uh, also, we should probably be going considerably slower than we're going. Because this is also hazmat. That's fine. Let's make sure that handbrake is off, and let's go get our job started. Alright, set us into forward. Make sure our brakes are all off. Uh, brakes pressure still coming up. Alright, let's go. So yeah, like I said, that slug is going to be providing our torque, uh, extra, uh, extra traction, extra torque, extra power, uh, whatever, um, helping to get this thing moving, uh, but it's not going to be very efficient at getting us going all that fast, which is fine, because right now we're kind of still in the yard, we want to be going about 30. It is a pretty long train. But this train is only 561 tons, which is not, like I said, the load rating on the DE6 is, uh, is a good bit more than that. So it should be able to handle this no problem. All right, we're losing speed. Let's go ahead and give it some juice. Because we are now on the hill. doing 20 and still dropping as that gets more and more on the hill. Let's keep let's keep adding some juice.
Yeah, like I said, the DE6 slug is kind of making it a little bit harder to get up to speed. We should be able to do it here. Uh, put in a little bit more juicy. We're not even using that much throttle. And uh, we, are, we are steadily increasing our speed here. But also, I believe that, that part where the switch is is also flat, so got to keep that in mind. We're doing all right. We don't really need to go more than 40, so... Honestly, this is pretty good right here at 35. We're just going cruise. All right, there's our tunnel. We're pretty much at the top of the grade. Should be fine. That curve always feels spicy at that switch. It's not actually all that spicy. It's not bad. It's actually a bit of a grade increase right here, and then the hill ends. Right on the other side of the tunnel. But see, look, our, our traction motor temp is not very high at all. It's honestly struggling to get hot because it's just distributed across a, a whole bunch of traction motors. Which is the really cool part about this engine. Alright, now we can do 70. We can send it. Alright, so we're going along. We've actually lost a little bit of speed. It's not a very aggressive downhill, so it's not going to really take us away yet. It gets a bit more aggressive after we pass these two junctions. But hopefully, I'll get the chance to show you the dynamic brakes. Alright, this is really where the grade picks up a bit. Um, we should see our speed start to increase. See what happens. Oh, yep. Yep, there it goes. Alright, so we're speeding up, going downhill and everything, but I really don't want to be speeding up right now. So what I could do is I could set up some air on our brakes to get us to a stop. But what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use the dynamic brake. Let's pop us into a level of dynamic. That's going to slow the rate at which we're accelerating. Let's get us a little bit more. Also, uh, we just have a speed limit decrease to 60, which is what we're doing. We need to go ahead and lower that a little bit. But, uh, yeah, so we're just going to throw a little bit of dynamic on and um, bring that down. And I actually want to get going a lot closer to 40, so let's bring that dynamic break up pretty hard. Make sure we're going the right way. We need to be going to B3I. We are absolutely flying at the moment. We're going to want to slow down. Supposed to be going 50. But yeah, we're just going to use that dynamic brake to slow us down. It's using the uh, power from the engine to put resistance. The, the motors are trying to resist turning. So that is slowing us down. I am actually going to take a set of air. B3I. We are here. Turn the bell on just for good measure. Because why not? It's a long train, so we got to make sure that we get it all in. Let's go ahead and set up our air. Dump the air because we've gone too far. Have we gone too far? We've just made it. Good. Great. Turn the bell off. All right. Made a very nice chunk of change right there. 
But uh, yeah, that kind of shows you guys the DE6 and the DE6 slug in action. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just pop up here. Like I said earlier, uh, it's got a fuel cutoff located right here. You just push that button and it'll turn itself off. Oh good, it started raining right as we got here. Um, but yeah, that is basically this locomotive. Uh, for, like I said, for $200,000, this thing is, uh, this thing is an end game locomotive for sure, but the, the slug can be used with the DE2 and is only $20,000, which is a lot better. Uh, and so you can actually use that, um, to help with your DE2 stuff. Um, the slug only spawns, uh, like I said, you could, you only have to use the spawner, uh, and you'll go to, you'll pull up the spawner and, um, in a career mode, it, obviously in a, um, sandbox, you can just spawn it in, uh, in a career mode, you can spawn it in, but it'll be using, instead of using the spawner, it'll say, uh, it's basically the spawner, but it'll say work train. And so that's how you bring in your work train stuff. And this would be considered one of those. Uh, like I said, you get it, get the slug down at the harbor. Uh, you get the light, uh, not the license, the key for Steve's garage, which is located down the little weird track that goes to nowhere. Well, actually no longer goes to nowhere. Now it goes to Steve's garage. That is a pretty good look at these guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you're still watching, be sure to remember to like, subscribe, check us out all the stuff. We do this series. Uh, we do a couple of series on this. I'm thinking about doing some no commentary stuff if you want to see some more of that because I did one of those videos and it did pretty well. Uh, and if you want to see an edited um, video of me playing this game, I'm also doing a series with that. So be sure to go check those out. And with that, we will see you guys in the next one. Later, everybody.